Okay, so initially building up with our dentine. Basic shape. Now we all experienced a bit of shrinkage in these areas, mesally and distally, so make sure we've got some porcelain in there. We need that to get that width in that area. So if it gets too moist, we just control a bit of the moisture, take a bit out, keep checking our shape. So now we'll just put a bit of tissue on there. So our key doesn't stick. Just give it a bit of a tap. Okay, so that's given us our basic shape. A little bit missing in size away here. Okay, so there's our basic buckle wall. We've got our lingual. This helps keep the moisture at the same level all the way around the crown so it's not just drying out on the front on the buckle surface. It might be the same amount of moisture right through so it just helps us add more same when we need to. If it's too dry it just sits on the top, it doesn't actually blend in. Sure, we get that incised lead starting to roll over like this. Bring the moisture to the surface again, a bit of condensing.
Okay, so we've just about got the basic shape, buckley and lingerly. Missing here. So now we go to our diagram and we've decided we're going to be putting some whitish whitish enamel effect in that mesial. So we're just going to make a space for that. Bluish in the distal. So I want to put in some memoirs. So we're basically just cutting out the areas where we want to put those effect materials in. We also want to increase the chroma around the neck. We don't want it to be a definite straight line, so we try and break it up just a fraction. So it doesn't look like we've just got a, like a half moon shape there. Okay, so that's giving us enough room to put these effects in. A little bit of moisture on there, so we know that it's going to accept the porcelain we put on top. So I'm just going to take a bit of that. Mix those two together because I want to increase the chroma, so I'm putting the chroma plus in the dentine. Mixed it's safer to mix it. If you just put it straight on there, it will just be like a, a brighter zone of okay. chroma. So we're just mixing it with the dentine. Chroma? Don't know what chroma is? Chroma is the intensity of the colour. So we're increasing the intensity of the colour around that area because that's what our diagram is asking for, so that's what either the dentist has seen in the in the natural tooth or we have when we've taken the shave. Okay, so you can see where that material has been placed. Just blending that up. Okay, so now we want to put a bit of mammal on. So this is the colour that I've mixed up here. By making it a different colour, you can see where you're putting it easily. You can see the three distinct areas that I've put it. A bit darker pink. A little bit too much, so I'm just going to take a little bit out now to be a little bit more precise where it is. enamel white in on the mesial. Okay, so it's being coloured, you can see exactly where it's going. Okay, 
Okay, and we also want to put some glue on the distal. Effect opal blue. Yes, it's still going on before the enamel. I haven't put any enamel on yet. It's like essential composition or something? Uh, it's probably similar to what you did with your symphony build up. Mm. Now we want a bit of clear. Neutral. So I'm sort of working to like a recipe that I've got drawn up. I'm just going to put a little bit of the clear over the top of the blue this area as well and that just helps it shine through and also over that white enamel area. If I want to, want to just make it a little bit less intense, I'll just put a little bit of dentine over the top, just in one area, so we can just see how much that makes a difference when we do that. So it's just over one of these mammalons, I'm just going to put a little bit more dentine. And that will just hide it slightly. Okay, and then we'll go with our standard enamel and that's going to go over the top. So you're not ending up with the effect powders right on the surface because we're covering them up with enamel as well. So we're just adding a little bit more to the lengths to uh, compensate for that shrinkage that we'll get. Bring the moisture to the surface by giving it a tap. I'm just going to check the incisal position because it does roll backwards a bit. So while it's soft, I can just apply a bit of pressure on there, and you can see it just it's just moving. So it's moving as one piece. Just a little bit of pressure, and then I can freeze that where I want it. Incisal material on that lingual side of the incisal edge. I'm also going to take a little bit down there mesial and distal as well. And it just frames it with enamel. It helps the light transmit around the around the outsides of the teeth. As the light hits it from the front it can travel around because it's got some translucent areas 
which is in the enamel. Got too much in areas, you can use a tool to cut it back. Something with a blade on it. So the size is just a little bit thick at the moment. We'll just take it a bit out of there. So we've got these areas into proximally where the adjacent tooth was sitting, so now we need to fill those up. Just put a bit of straight chroma plus in there to give us a bit of extra colour into proximally. Quite often people have a bit of staining between their teeth. So we'll just put a little bit of that in there. What's this colour? This is the chroma plus. So CP3 is the one that corresponds with this shade. Sorry? That's the thing that you put around the... Yes, the yeah, that's, that's what I added to the dentine to give us more depth of colour, more intensity. Right. And the rest we'll just do a little bit of dentine just to fill up that, that void that's there. Don't want to overfill this, otherwise you have to grind it all off to get your contacts down, so... It comes with experience, you learn how much your crown shrinks because everyone's will shrink differently depending on how much moisture you've got in the crown. So we're just filling up there, putting a bit of incisor material in there as well. <coughs> Inside, same again. A little bit of zentine first. Okay, so that's basically the build up that I, I wanted to do. Just take a little bit of moisture out. The whole crown has got the same consistency right through it at the moment. There's moisture right around, so we'll just take a little bit out of the lingual as well. It helps the crown when it's firing to shrink at the same rate, and that alleviates the cracking problems that some of us get when we've got one wet area and one dry area, so it's pulling at different different rates, it's shrinking at different rates and it tends to tear. So we're just gonna make sure it's even all the way around, that's all we need to do. Okay, so that can go on a tray now, firing tray in the furnace. 